I said, has it been five minutes? Above? Okay, all right, good. So uh, let me explain this camera. Um, Hanyang University wants to start filming um, different classes to put the classes online, um, to make some online classes. So that's why the man is here to do this one. So um, I kind of forgot they're coming. Um, so I guess he's going to film me, and I don't know if he wants to film you. Um, I don't know. Um, so if you're comfortable, uh, maybe he'll film you. But if you don't like it, if you're uncomfortable, I think you can kind of just say, uh, please, tikji uh, maseo, something like that one, if you don't like it. Um, so um, I don't know. This is a new thing. I don't know what's happening. They didn't explain exactly. Just uh, these guys are here to film. So um, we'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, and then I guess this is the cameraman. Okay, I don't know where his, the, the young was, but something like this one. So I guess we'll just jump into it. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right, good. So um, we'll start from page 140. As you read, you can go through and answer these questions. So here's the page number, and here are the questions. Um, let me explain the questions. Uh, first, on 144, it says, what is the meaning of the truth as you are Chinese now? Um, this is easy to understand. However, there's kind of a cultural meaning, a deeper meaning. What exactly is Chen saying? So what is, how is this important? Um, number 146, this is Chen and Matilda. Um, they have this argument about going to Hunan. Hunan is Chen's hometown. They have a big argument. Um, but like happened before, there's some kind of deep issue. It comes up again and again and again. So on 146, what exactly is the argument about? Why are they fighting so much? And um, here they talk about the sea. So um, starting on page 146, the story talks about the sea. And we said before that there's something called a symbol or a metaphor. So uh, we said before that a metaphor or symbol, it's something that has a deep meaning. So here the sea, they talk about the sea, but if you think about it, it has a deeper meaning. So what is the metaphor? What is the symbolic meaning of the sea? And then finally on 158 it says, but after all, uh, Chen, that's Chen, did not kiss her. It was not the custom of his race. So especially... Um, so what is the meaning of this one? Um, especially this part, the custom of his race. What are they talking about? And uh, the last one, yes, she had loved Chen's body for a time. So um, you can kind of read through the story a little bit quickly. And uh, as you read in your group, you can just kind of ask and answer these questions. Um, just I'll give you maybe five minutes or ten minutes or more if you need it. So um, any questions about what we're supposed to do? No? Okay, so just um, kind of start from page 140, and you can kind of skim through the story. Uh, don't try to understand every word. Just kind of, uh, kind of get the basic point, get the basic meaning so you can answer the question. So I'll give you about uh, 10 minutes or so to go through and answer the questions. So um, that's a good question. On page 146, where do they talk about the sea? Um, the word they actually use here is the coast. But from this page, 146, 148, 150, every time they talk about the sea or the coast, it kind of has the deep meaning. So actually, they use the coast, but kind of the meaning is the same. minutes or so. Okay, I think uh, most people are at least on 144 to 146. So what you can do in your groups is uh, answer these questions just for a minute or two. Then we'll all talk together about it. So just take a couple minutes, uh, answer this question and this question in your group by talking. 
your sentence. The choice is your Chinese now. Yes. Um, the way of <laughs> Chinese thinking that she must be part of she just wants to stay and only wants to be like isolated in, in the foreign house. Oh, maybe she wants to be isolated in the foreign house. I think it has some relations to the first question because and also mm -hmm. Chang, like you said, Chang wants Matilda to be a Chinese woman. So I don't think Matilda really wants to be she doesn't believe Chinese woman. She wants to stay why, French why while being married to Chinese woman. That's why she doesn't want to argue about that. Yeah. Yeah. She goes to Huda uh, to meet Chinese parents. Now she would have to follow Chinese customs and be a good daughter-in-law. Huda would be a good daughter-in-law. Huda would be a good daughter-in-law. Huda would be a good daughter-in-law. She thinks that her another reason might be uh, she wants Lying. to live oh, okay. in the kind of area because oh, she misses the country. <laughs> 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 and it goes on to the last question, what is the meaning of the scene? And the host. You will not think there is no any issues near to any beautiful house and... I think I see the last also, why Chang is to go go to that place and live when she lives in a city or on she calls back home, she can't go to the city to go back to her home for a month. Her parents will be there. So, she has to physically be content and Okay. About. Her Chang says that they have to live in Huan because his real home is at What's the meaning of the truth? You are, you are Chinese now. So this group, um, what do you think this means? Uh, we suppose that it, it means Matilda should be accustomed by uh, Chinese, Chinese culture, which is Chinese culture. So she should be accustomed to Chinese culture. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it. So uh, Chen saying you should follow the culture, kind of, kind of, um, but there's a little bit more to it. It's a little bit more complicated. He's kind of sending her a message. Um, so you guys, um, so they said she should follow Chinese culture. You guys, do you have anything to add to that? Okay, kind of these, this group, they're really close, they kind of got it. So remember between Chen and Matilda, uh, what is their relationship? Yeah, they're husband and wife, they're a married couple. But um, Matilda, is she, is she Chinese? No, she's not Chinese, she's French. So why is, uh, and then um, Chen is telling her, you have to be Chinese, even though you're French. Um, so he's telling her something about uh, her. So in any relationship, married, uh, you have a role in your family. Here he's talking about the role of uh, a woman, uh, a wife. So he's saying to her, your role is this one. Chen is saying, what is he saying the role is to Matilda? You're a wife, you're a woman, I'm the husband, you should. Yeah, okay, so he's telling her. This is the important thing. He's telling her that she should obey, she should follow her husband, she should follow him like this one. And uh, is that good or bad? Well, it's kind of hard to say. Do you think she's going to do this? 
Mm. No, it doesn't work. It's not going to work. So it's kind of interesting. And then uh, here we talk about the coast. Uh, Matilda says, I want to stay near the coast to be by the sea. Mm -hmm. And Chen says, no, let's go to Hunan, where my hometown is. So the sea, the ocean, it has kind of a deeper meaning. Uh, what is the meaning of the sea? We said it's a sea, but it's also a metaphor. It has a deeper meaning. Sea is close to France. Sea is close to France. So a sea is a body of water. The sea um, on one side is France, on the other side is China, where they are. But it's also a, a symbol, a, a meaning. Uh, what is, any ideas? Just escape from China. China. Escaping from China. Just in case, uh -huh. Just in they case. are divorced and uh -huh. she can, she's able to go back to her country. Mm -hmm. So she don't want to go to Funa because of, mm -hmm. just in case. Okay, well kind of, he's got it. So the sea is a physical thing, it's a physical space. But what does the uh, metaphor mean? I think it kind of symbolizes the distance between her and her home. At the same time, there's a distance between Chang and Matil. Right, very good. So we got this one. So the metaphor, probably, I could be wrong, but it's uh, the metaphor is the... So um, the C kind of means the space between them. Uh, in English, I might have this expression. English, I might say we're oceans apart, or I could say um, I could say we're oceans apart, or oceans apart on this issue. So, what is this expression? Uh, kind of, they're not appropriate for each other. In a conversation, um, I might say this about. One of my friends and I, for example, I can say, well, we're oceans apart on this issue. So he's kind of got it. Uh, Chen and Matilda are oceans apart. But what does this uh, expression mean? Oceans apart. We are confront each other. Mm -hmm. Discussing something. Maybe we're close. We agree. If we completely disagree, we're oceans apart. So this one, it shows that they're very far apart, not even a little bit close. The space between them is very big. So um, like he said, we're going to have a, a very hard time with this. So those are the uh, two questions on 144 and 146. And uh, this one, even if you haven't read it, you can kind of figure it out by the context. So um, on page 158 here and here, even if you didn't read this part, just by looking at the quotation, you can kind of figure out what this is about. So um, in your group, I'll give you just a couple minutes. Look at this quote. What does this mean? And look at this quote. What does it mean? What, uh, what is the meaning of these two quotations? And like I said, even if you didn't read page 158, still you can kind of understand, figure out what is the meaning of this one and this one. So I'll give you uh, maybe two minutes to answer the questions in your groups. What are they talking about here that um, after all Chen did not kiss her. It was not the custom of his race. So what is this about? Yeah, what does this mean? Here, especially they say the custom of his race. Uh, this is kind of the most important thing here. And uh, to understand a little bit, if I look at kiss in English, there are different kinds of kisses. Uh, for example, uh, right, okay. So if I say a peck, what is a peck? Um, yeah, like this one, just, just like a little one like this one, a kiss on the cheek or a peck on the lips. Uh, it's very innocent, very sweet. There's no love or romance, just a peck 
like this one. Uh, what about, what is a kiss? A kiss can mean anything. It could be a peck or something romantic or passionate. There's no feeling. It's just general. But here, this is the important one, a French kiss. Um, what is a French kiss? And then please don't show me. You can just, uh, <laughs> you can just explain. So what is a French kiss? Yeah, it's a deep kiss with an open mouth. It's very passionate, very romantic. So this is an idea. And remember, Matilda is French. So kissing is not from France, but it's very important. Um, people kiss on the street. They kiss their mothers. Not French kiss, uh, I hope. Uh, just a, a peck or kiss on the cheek. It's kind of a kissing culture. But what about Chen? No. Um, in... East Asia, people don't kiss in public. You don't kiss your mothers or your fathers or your brother or sister. If you see people kissing on the street, you think, oh, it's a little bit weird sometimes, especially a hundred years ago. <gasps> oh my God, kissing, that's disgusting and shocking. So um, Matilda says, kiss me, please. And then Chen doesn't kiss Matilda. Is it because he doesn't love her? Mm, not so much. Why doesn't he kiss her? Right. Uh, so he's from China. Chinese don't kiss or didn't kiss at that time. She's from a kissing culture. So it's a, it's a big problem, not because of lack of love. It's just not his style. He's a traditional Chinese, but she feels rejected. She feels upset. Oh, you don't kiss me. You don't love me. No, I just... We don't kiss. That's Chinese style. So it's kind of a big problem. And what is this one? Um, yes, she loved Chen's body for a time. She didn't love Chen truly, mm -hmm. totally, but she only like, enjoyed, her, enjoyed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe uh, she just liked his body. Uh, anything else? She wants to love Chen for now. Mm -hmm. she, she doesn't love. <clears throat> Right, okay, so maybe she doesn't love him anymore, or simply, uh, simply put, the honeymoon's over. Uh, after you get married, the first year or so, uh, wonderful, so happy. Same thing when you start at Hanyang University. You say, yeah, Wang Shimni, I love Wang Shimni. Let's go to Wang Shimni, let's drink. And then uh, the next semester, oh, uh, Wang Shimni. And then later, <laughs> ah, Wang Shimni, the honeymoon's over. So they were very happy in the beginning, but now the honeymoon's over. Feeling is not so strong. So I think that's what that means. So um, are there uh, any questions for uh, what we read today? No, not so much. No, okay. So what we'll do for next week is um, so for next week, what we can do is we can uh, finish the story. Uh, we'll finish reading the whole story of Repatriated, and then after that, We'll have some discussion about it. So just uh, until the end of the story, which I think it goes to about 170. Okay, um, so uh, 176. So you can just read until the end of the story. Try this guy's hand. Brink. Let's bring questions. All right, so two things you'll have to do is finish reading the story and then uh, be prepared to discuss. I'll give you questions. You can talk about the story in your group and then bring questions. If there's something you don't understand, uh, you can ask. And what I'll do now is I'll give you back your midterm exams. Oh, no, 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 it's not that bad. You guys did pretty well. So... Um, the maximum score was 32. I don't know if we had a perfect score, but most people got A's and B's. It was good. So what you can do is um, you can look at the exam for a couple of minutes. Uh, you can ask me questions if you have any questions. Um, 
I think the scores were actually pretty good, so please don't tell me, oh, he got a 1.75, but I only got a 1.5. Generally, your scores were pretty good, so please don't try to push me and get a higher score, because generally you did very well. And then, um, so you can look at your exam for five minutes, 10 minutes. After you've looked at everything, um, you can give it back to me and then go. Like we said, our um, makeup lesson is five o'clock today here. Um, it's optional. If you feel like it, you could come, we'll talk and watch a movie. If you don't want to, it's completely optional, whatever you want to do. Um, so I'll give you your exams. You can just divide to find your score. And um, let me see. And then uh, who did not take the exam? Okay, so you guys can maybe go outside and then come back in 10 minutes.